Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here for a super awesome, amazing episode. But if it is your first time here, thanks for checking us out. What's up? I'm Jersey. Make sure to go back and check out some of our past episodes if you can. They are awesome, and uh, hopefully they don't suck so bad that you want to watch more of them. So we're like going almost to 40 now on the weekly podcast, so definitely go back and check those out. Um, And if you are part of the nation, if you're somebody who watches religiously every week, you comment, you subscribe, you did all that cliche stuff, thank you. Thank you. It's because of you that I get to do this and I get to hang out with my buddy Josh. So thank you so much for that. And finally, I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. So if you're part of the nation and you're one step up in your cool level, you order your supplies through me. So thank you. Uh, my number, 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Let me know, big or small, or any orders, any questions, anything. Let me be your resource, and uh, it'll be awesome sauce. So I do want to also mention that uh, our videos, we love to have comments, and we do giveaways every single week. And this week, our giveaway will be posted on Window Cleaning Resource Facebook page, as opposed to the video, because of when uh, the videos are being recorded. So definitely check that out. But if you're watching right now, comment down below. Make sure to talk to us. Let us know what you think. Uh, Ask questions. Uh, Just say, what's up? Your nose is crooked. I'm sorry that I had to see that. And I'm okay with that. But it's your chance to win. We give away a $50 credit every single week and a swag bag, which is a t-shirt. It's the Adderay pin. It's a sticker pack. It's the whole thing. So definitely, definitely do all that. And that brings me to our super awesome guest today, which is the Josh Latimer. What's going on, man? Hey, Josh or Jersey. Do I call you Jersey on the show? Because we're both- That doesn't matter. (laughs) No, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. Yeah. So uh, I'm totally excited to be able to talk to you after your podcast is kind of just, you're doing the daily thing, which I can't even fathom. So to you- it's uh, it's awesome to have a podcast or somebody out there talking that is genuinely good, like a good information. There's so much stuff out there now that kind of floods the market, and uh, not not to any not bad on any creators, but there's just so much stuff out there that that uh, it's pretty nice to see somebody like you doing a daily thing. How how is that? How is recording daily for you? I love it. The podcast is my favorite thing to do in, in the world. It's I don't know if it's like a creative thing, if it, if it inspires myself. I mean, the reason I committed this year to do one every day, and by the way, it's not just doing one every day. I want them to be great. I want them to be full of like inspiration and actual actionable things on how to systemize and build your home service company. And so I don't like batch them. I don't record 20 of them and then take three weeks off. Like I'm doing these like in real time for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and it's been amazing. But what it does is it holds me accountable to my business goals for our software company and stuff um, to just be on point, right? And to just be engaged in podcasting because I'm a podcast junkie myself. Yeah. Uh, is one of the best ways to build a tribe of people and to serve and give people and build massive goodwill in the marketplace is by helping people. Yeah. Yeah. And the podcast thing is super cool for our industry because a lot of guys are out in the field, right? They're working. So to just chill and listen to uh, pretty awesome messages or just like you said, inspiration, just getting something out of it. It's a lot better than watching, you know, I Love Lucy reruns and one of your clients TVs or something, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And in our podcast is super industry specific and it's all about nuts and bolts. Like some of the things that drive me crazy about um, information that's out there is it's like fluffy or surface level, or you can't figure out how to connect the dots to your actual business and what stage you're in. And uh, we don't do any of that. We're like teaching you literally how to double or triple your business, how to put in systems that are profitable, how to understand your numbers better. I interview people with multi-million dollar service companies that literally started with nothing. You know, they built a window cleaning business that does three million a year, or, or a carpet cleaning business that does six million a year, and and we get into the the how, which is yeah. amazing because that is always drove me nuts back in the day. Is what do I do next? Like, what is the next logical thing? Because people are out there working. Like, there's not a lack of effort in the marketplace. Like, I think people work hard in general, but what happens is they work really hard on the wrong things in the yeah. wrong order. And so they can't scale bit fast enough. They can't get unstuck. They don't have the money they wanted. Uh, we try to help people fix that on my podcast. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, there's there's two sides to the media side of things too. And we have a great media team that 
does videos for window cleaning resource but those guys they do like reviews and how to's and here's a squeegee and here's a and there's another side where like you said you understand how to do the business but you don't understand what to do in your business or or what to put your focus on and if you just focus on everything you you burn out it's like marketing money you only have so much you only have so much time too if you focus on the wrong things or you just try to figure it out on your own it's a lot harder of a go it's so much harder and mm -hmm. and because our industry is filled with technicians including me by the way when i started is yeah. we get we go really deep on the tools the equipment the technical side um but that can lead you down a road that can get you stuck. Um, not that equipment's bad. There's amazing stuff out there. And I love Chris and WCR. You guys have amazing equipment and tools and you and you educate about those things. But what there's a lack of that I see that causes a lot of stress is a lack of understanding on how to build the back end of your business. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong. If you want to stay small and be what I call an artisan business, meaning you just are passionate about the work you do, like the, the, the creative side of cleaning windows and like you're a master at that. That's amazing. That yeah. is amazing. But a lot of people want to build like a business that's they can like go on vacation Scalable. and it still yeah. works and makes money and then they come back and everything's OK. And that's a totally different conversation, regardless of what squeegee brand you use or any of the equipment stuff. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, I know there's a lot of haters out there. You yeah. might get it, too. I, the nicer the guys, the less haters you get. So I don't know. You probably don't have any. But the guys that say, like, oh, you're telling everybody it's just so easy to do, you know, we get that all the time. And that's not necessarily it. Like, you still have to have drive to do this. Like, this is not something. It's it's business. Like, businesses fail at a very, very high rate because those people may not have it. All we're trying to do is if you're already in the business, try to help, you know, learn and kind of hone what you're doing, you know. Think about this. Think about if you were back in the day when you started your business, if there was all these resources, like think of what, how quickly you go from zero to 60, you mm -hmm. know? There's no doubt about it. No. There, there, look, here's the thing. The one thing you can't train a new employee on and one thing you can't create in yourself is hunger. You either are hungry or you're not hungry. Mm -hmm. You're either driven or you're not. And maybe you're not. And that's okay. It doesn't make you a bad person, but... But if you take someone who's hungry and wants to grow and you plug them into the, the ecosystem of WCR or some of the podcasts and resources that are out there right now, it's like rocket fuel. I mean, yeah. it's not about how hard it's not. We're not saying it's easy. But what we are saying is that you don't have to beat your head against the wall anymore. If you will execute and implement the simple systems in the right order. Yes, it's hard, but it's light years easier and it's a lot faster. I work with thousands. I've had over a thousand individual calls with small businesses where I've coached and helped them with their companies. And I've, I've identified patterns. I mean, over a thousand, that's a real number. I can't it's even crazy. believe it. But like I see patterns, right? So I, I have some people I work with that have seven figure businesses. Some people started last week. And what happens is, is I talk, I call it the five stages of business. And where people get confused is they work on like the wrong systems at the wrong time. So you might be really small trying to make 500 bucks a week to survive, but you're spending your free time building some super ultra complex financial spreadsheet or something. That's yeah. a waste of time. Like right. there's only a couple of things you have to do in order for each stage, right? As you scale up and getting clarity on that, it just, it, it is so empowering to the person that is hungry. And that's what I try yeah. to provide every day is that clarity. I totally dig that. Like, first off, the artisan business thing, I, I may be uh, stealing that and in, in when I talk, too. That's amazing. But, like, <laughs> you're, you're creating fuel. You have to have, like you said, you have to have that engine. You're just giving it fuel. You're helping it. And, I mean, when when you you started probably about the same time as I, how long were you actually in the industry? When did you start? What year? Do you remember? Ooh, yeah, I started around 2007, 2008 right during the Great Recession, just <laughs> south of Flint, Michigan, which is a crazy area to start a, a window cleaning business right during that time. Uh, and for the first two, two and a half years, it was a nightmare, to be honest. I mean, I worked so freaking hard, but I was broke the whole time. Everything yeah. was under price. I didn't understand my numbers. I didn't understand how to work on my business instead of in my business. I didn't know anything. And I stumbled upon window cleaning resources forum back in the early days. I was like, there's like 40,000 people registered on there. I was less than 1,000, I think, or right around nice. there. And I would just creep through and try to find gold nuggets. But at the same time, there's so much bad advice because yeah. you mentioned earlier, there's a huge difference between competent, qualified advice and someone's opinion. They're not the mm -hmm. same thing. 
Right. The world doesn't have advice overload. It has opinion overload. So you got to be really careful where you get the steps from. If, if, they, if you wouldn't trade places with them, never take advice with them. If yeah. you wouldn't switch your business and life straight up with theirs, just push pause on what they're saying and find someone that you would. Um, but luckily, because of Chris and, and the, the risk he took by building this whole forum thing, I did find some high-level people, and I just replicated what they were doing. Yeah. Other people have already done it. In fact, there's people dumber than you, the person listening to this, that have a seven-figure business. I promise you, okay? You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You have to be able to execute and, and, and be patient and, and do the right steps in the right order, surround yourself with the right people, and it, it will happen. It, mm -hmm. it just it always does if you do those things. Yeah, and a lot of people watch stuff like what you put out, what I put out, what just that's out there, and they go, oh, this is it. This is it. I'm going to follow this to the T. That's not... Anything like what exactly works for one person or somebody else may not work for somebody else in a different area, in a different weather, in a different – like you have to take the best snippets and create your business, not recreate kind of, you know, that guy. Oh, he's doing amazing. Like I'm going to do everything to the T that that guy's exactly doing. Like you said, replicate the best parts of that to kind of create your, your feeling. And that's really where these people that, that yell and say, oh, you're telling people it's easy. That's where they get it wrong. They, they think that everybody's telling them the exact way to do it. I say, I'm just some guy, like I'm a dummy, like just listen to what I have and maybe pull something out of it, you know, but it's the people who think that there's some magic, there's some magic pill or there's some magic, you know, formula where if you follow only that and you don't see anything else, then that's exact, you know, it's, it's all different. Like you said, you started in the reset, like you, I started 2000, like six, 2007, like you did, where all of a sudden things kind of just went Ugh, and and like that will never happen again in whoever's listening to this is lifetime you know it they may not be in michigan like you were they may not be they may be in arizona where there's no winters there you know there's just so much right. there's diversity. definitely seasonal um nuances and stuff like that but people get confused over strategy and business systems and tactics so for example if someone makes a, a video and they're really smart and they say do this type of marketing use this flyer word it like this do it like this always put them out in april and put this coupon on it and it's amazing right yeah that might not scale across the whole country right so that's a tactic though but the thing yeah. that people really miss it's not like like i spend zero time arguing over Unger versus Ettore versus whatever versus whatever, this or that. It's yes, you have to have equipment. And yes, I have to be professionally competent to deliver the deliverable to my client that paid me money. I have to clean the thing the way I said. That is a business structural truth. All the other tactical, do it like this or do it like that. That's all up for debate. But the problem is, is this is where everybody spends their time arguing. This is where they spend their time learning. What I figured out was that when you're a stage one business, meaning you're spending most of your time in the field, there's only like two things that matter at all if you want to scale your business. Number one is investing hard into what I call bog marketing, boots on the ground. You have to just go out, invest your time, and sell like a ravenous circus monkey. People don't do it. They pass out 300 flyers and say, oh, bummer, I don't have any money. No, pass out 30,000 <laughs> flyers. Yeah. Bog marketing. The second thing is you need to systemize the way that you do clean the thing or mow the lawn or whatever. And you can do it however you want, but lock it in so that you can train someone on it. After yeah. you've established that, you go to stage two where you're spending more time in the office or you're on your phone all the time. You're sitting in your truck and your crew's over there and you're like answering emails and you're like, oh, my God, and you're panicking. And you're like, I need an office manager, but I can't afford an <laughs> office manager. And that's a stage two thing. And so once you're there, there's a couple things you work on. That's it. Once yeah. those are in place, stage three, it keeps going. So that, that structure is universal across all markets. But the tactics and how you want to do it and inject your own personality into it, that's completely elastic and flexible. And you can do whatever you want with that. But I'm, I, I hope I'm being clear. I don't know if I am. Yeah. But the business building piece of it is a real roadmap there the is a structure the there like is a path yeah but people don't even identify the path they don't know the path they won't stay on the path they go run into the weeds over there and argue about waterford poles and then they come back over here and then they do it right so if you understand that that back-end business building system stuff even though it's still hard and it's not perfect you will scale light years ahead of yeah. your competition and you'll crush them you'll have stronger customer loyalty you'll have higher average tickets you'll be way more profitable you'll have a stronger company culture because you built things in the right order yeah and then i always say the funny thing about uh systems where like you said people get oh well i'll do this for a little bit and then they kind of go off to the next thing it's like mcdonald's there's pictures in the back of mcdonald's that tell you what where to put the lettuce <laughs> 
on every burger. Like they have to be the same because if it's the same, you can tell somebody. If it's not, you can't scale. Like these people, they they hinder themselves in scaling because there's nothing that they can teach somebody else. Like, oh, what do you do here? It's all in their head. Uh, yeah, they have yeah. systems. And here's actually here's a profound thing. If you want to steal this too, because I I stole it. <laughs> but every single person listening to this right now already has a systemized business. Okay. So the question isn't, should I build systems? You already are having systems. For example, if you don't follow up with your customers after a service, you have a zero touch follow-up system, okay? If you (laughs) are rude in a butthole to your employees and you're negative, you have a I'm a jerk butthole system for company culture. Like the, the trick is, is to make sure your systems are calibrated to serve you and to give you what you want. And, and if they're not, then we fix them. And we also got to get them out of your head. I love the McDonald's example because McDonald's, for, by and large, is run by 15-year-olds with zits on their face, and they do like $3.6 million a year in sales per location. Like, that's insane, right? They don't even let people put the own soda in the in – the, or we call it pop here in Michigan – in the cup. <laughs> they have a conveyor belt that like drives and it fills itself. They don't even trust people to do that. They're like, no, yeah. we're going to spend – 800 grand in research and development and build a conveyor belt for pop, right? Because we know the exact amount of ice to put in that cup. That is. Right. <laughs> yeah, but they've covered all the bases. We can use that concept on a much simpler level for our small cleaning business and crush it. You got to understand, 90% of people out there are terrible at running a business. If you can do a little bit of the stuff we're talking about, you're going to instantly be in the top 10%. If you just answer your phone, if you're just over the top friendly, if you just use high level literature when you drop off your price, if you learn how to be a professional recommender when you're selling instead of just writing a price on a business card and leaving, or you know, there's like these little things that are free and it all has to do with how you answer the phone, how you present your pricing. If you can get that out of your head, be a little bit creative, You'll become a nightmare to compete with in your market, and you will get higher prices. Yeah, yeah, it's it's building a, 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 a systems are like the structure for what you have. Like, like you're saying, just if you, I like your laser focus ideas too. That if you are a floodlight, you may put a little bit of light on everything, but you're not focused into each of those little pieces that you really need to. And right. a, a lot of people get overwhelmed. That's really yes. what it is, you know. That's a real thing, man. It's it's it stinks so bad to be overwhelmed, and I still get overwhelmed sometimes. I'm building a yeah. software company now and doing different things that are new to me, and so like I'm going through these stages of business again, you know, because my company scaled up and we sold it three years ago now, actually, which I can't believe it's been that long. But we did almost two hundred thousand the month that we sold our company, which it was hard. It breaks people's brain. They think that's impossible. It was. It's not, but it is amazing to look back on. Um, but like now I'm starting over and I'm going through the same thing, but I get overwhelmed just like someone who's doing a hundred grand and wants to get to 250 is overwhelmed. Um, there, it's just get around people who have already done what you want to do, listen to them and simplify and do one or two things at a time. And eventually you're going to wake up and look and you're going to have a full team. Everything will be, uh, SOP, you know, standard operating procedures and it will like work and stuff and you can stop touching it and it will still kick off profit it's an amazing thing when that happens yeah and your business doesn't have to be huge to to have a fully systemized team but once you get up to that half a million to three quarters of a million mark you can have that and it sets you free it's amazing yeah the 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 thing about systems like you're saying too is that you are now financially building in uh efficiency by just having the same thing you do the way that you do it every single time so now you can, like you said, go on vacation. The first time you can go on vacation and, and sit on a beach somewhere and go, I'm making money right now. Like that is the reason why a lot of people get in. It's yeah. the freedom for business. But remember the first two years you were in business, like you said, you, you were just like lost. Like I, we had at that time, Gary Mauer's like, uh, 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 what was it? Email group or whatever it was called world, I think. But I, anyway, sorry, Gary, I can't remember. It's been so long, but that was the only thing. So like you'd send an email to everybody on the list and then you'd wait for a response and you'd dig through. It was like so hard to find kind of specific things. And then it slowly started building. And now, I mean, now there's so much out there that people lose focus. I think the same way that we did, it's just different. They just have so much information. Like, ah, this guy's talking about, uh, you know, getting a a truck mounted uh, system. That's what I need. Well, (laughs) are you there? Why do you need that? Are you in parking lots? Do you not need a trade? Like, you know, and they get lost on the other side because there's so much Mm -hmm. thing. There there was a quote one time that says in back in the day, it was all about the question you asked. Now it's uh, the uh, how you ask the question because 
you can ask a question. Information's everywhere. It's you could learn anything about you want to learn about astrophysicists, whatever. You could find that in a heartbeat. It's just how you ask that question to find the exact part that you actually need, and and that's that's really what people kind of lack in. It's true, man. It's a, it's the wild west online. There's keyboard warriors everywhere, it, and it's confusing. Let me give some good advice because I think this will help people. The first thing everybody needs to do is define your why, or I call it the mountaintop, the destination. This doesn't have to be a 40 year life plan, but you need to clearly be able to articulate to me of, you know, most people can't do this because it takes a lot of hard work. What do you want and when do you want it by? Okay. That's the mountaintop. Only then can you properly answer questions. So here's what happens online. Someone will say, should I buy the something, something piece of equipment? And then people go and give a million answers Yeah. when you can't answer until we get some other backstory because everybody's situational. For example, if this guy, his goal is to be an artisan and do this and make this personal income and work this many months a year, that's completely different than someone over here who wants to do something else, right? Are they going to pay cash for it? Are they going to go into debt? But you can you can answer a question like that for someone if they have clearly defined their mountaintop, okay? Because what you're doing is you're measuring the, 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 the should I do this, should I do that? You're measuring that against the plumb line of what your ultimate goal is with the business, but it has to be specific and it has to be time stamped. So for, so the question becomes really simple when you know where you're going, it's does, does making this decision move me closer or further away from my why from my mountaintop? It's a lot more binary. And because I always tell people, I don't know if people can see this, but like you have a piece of paper, if there's a line down the middle, there's, there's two columns on this side is coulds. And you can fill it up with, I could buy this, I can invest in that, I could hire an employee, I could buy another truck, I could spend money on this marketing, I could sign up for this software, I can do this, I could do this, I could do this, it's endless. This list is huge. And the reason people fail and get stuck is because this other side, this is your shoulds. These are the shoulds, okay? So you got the coulds, yeah. which are limitless, and the shoulds. We get confused on how to, which ones should move over to this side, right? Right. The way to fix that is to have a really clear answer to what do you want, when do you want it by? And it still won't be perfect, but that is a huge mind bomb epiphany for people. It's like, oh my God, because people can only tell me what they don't want. I'm like, what do you want? They're like, well, I don't want to struggle anymore. That's not a thing. I can't (laughs) measure that. I can't, I don't know if we're winning. Um, So spend time on that and it'll help you guys a lot. Yeah. Nobody gets into a car and just drives. Like you're like, oh, I'm going on vacation. You may even only know the area. I want to go to the mountains or whatever, but you know Mm -hmm. specifically where that is honed in and not the entire mountains. It's you have to well that's one of the ways you can tell online if someone is going to give competent advice is like if someone asks a question like that that's situational and everybody's just like without asking a question back like well what do you want how long have you been in business what's your sales last year how many staff do you have do you have a lot of debt how's your cash flow what do you say like those are like where do you want to go like you need to know that to answer the question in context because everybody's different man and yeah yeah there's, there's a lot of uh, people just want to be heard. They don't care about what they're saying. And that's oh, where the internet kind of good. thing comes into that's play. That's gold right there. That's a sound bite. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's true. But it is. It, especially with the internet is like people just want to put, you know, first. How many times have you seen that as a joke, you know, on like YouTube? First, you didn't say anything. They just want to be in front of people. And that's a lot of times where, and that's why people get so pissed about like, you may be an Ettore guy, I may be an Unger guy, and you will fight me tooth and nail about how garbage Unger is compared to Ettore because you're an Ettore guy. Like, you're arguing about nothing. You're just arguing to make noise at that point. When, mm-hmm. in in theory, a channel's a channel. They're the exact same shape. They're the exact same, you know, for, you know, other than just a couple different ones out there. But for the most part, these people could still fight teeth and nail. It could be a different sticker and people would still argue. So it's, yeah, it's, well, I think people, and this is just human nature and this is me too. And this is you, we want significance. I mean, we want to be significant. We want our life to have value. We want our voice to be heard. Like you said. Um, but what we're doing is we're trying to achieve significance the wrong way through all this pointlessness, instead of answering the, the one question that's more important than anything, which is what do you want? And when do you want it by? Because the whole question of hard work and blah, 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 all that goes away. I always tell my kids, Josh, I have five kids. I tell them it doesn't matter how hard it is. It only matters if it's worth it. 
Yeah. Once you latch on to something that you want so bad for your family to change your family tree, when you are like, oh, I want it, I, I don't, you won't care how hard things are. <clears throat> you will only care if it's worth it. And it changes your entire paradigm. Like in my early 20s, I was like the, going on to like smallbusinessopportunities.com. Like I'm trying to figure out how do I make $8 trillion a day doing no work per minute, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted until I was 25 years old. And when I started my company, even though I got my car repossessed in year one, even though my wife's debit card got declined trying to buy groceries in year two, even though I was humiliated, um, I knew what I wanted from day one. I didn't know how to get it yet, but I knew my stomach hurt. I wanted to build a machine, a systemized business that I didn't have to touch. It was never about money. It was about the accomplishment and how fascinated I was by building an automated business that I could step back from. And yeah. then you fast forward six years after that pain, me learning some systems and some things and going really deep. And yes, I worked my guts out. Um, it was automated. The last two years I owned it, I didn't even work in the business at all. And it yeah. grew 35% a year the last two years. So it is possible, uh, but you have to, you have to, have to, have to, have to know what you want and when you want it by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a guy, uh, and I want to say it, uh, one of the pasture guys or something, but it says that uh, if you ever want to learn how to succeed, you just walk into the ocean. And that doesn't make much sense until you realize that if you walk into the ocean and you get to the point where you need to breathe, you, you're treading water so long, you're, you're going under the water. That's the only thing you focus on is breathing at that point. You don't think about, you know, what you're going to have for dinner. You don't think about what's on TV. You don't think about anything but breathing because now your focus is on one thing and one thing only. Yeah. Anybody can do anything that they want to if mm. the focus is there, you know, a, That's right. a, a beam of light can light a fire like that is it's so focused it it's can amazing. do amazing things dude that's so good and yeah. uh, i think lambo likes the book the one thing by gary keller it's a pretty popular book uh and right in the beginning of the book like there's this russian proverb which is hilarious i didn't really think there's russian proverbs but I, of <laughs> course there are right but it says if you chase two rabbits you will catch neither one and so the problem is is we haven't defined which rabbit we're going for what life we want right and again it doesn't have to be a 40-year life goal you, it's elastic. You can change it as your family grows and you change your mind. But you got to have a destination, a geo coordinate to point the ship towards. And then get off the internet. The people on the internet that are just just commenting all day, they have crappy small businesses. I'm sorry, they just do. Yeah. People that are building something significant have tunnel vision on what they're trying to do, and they are in the field doing the unsexy stuff, building systems, coaching their team, learning how to, you know, just perfect all the little moving parts in their business. And they don't. They don't go on there and be a keyboard warrior all day. Mm -hmm. There's actually, a, this just happened. So I have to monitor, I'm on Facebook all the time for work, WCR. But so I monitor all this. And I know people from being in the industry for a very long time. And this, I'm not going to use names, but this was just yesterday or maybe it was Tuesday and it flowed into yesterday. But big comments. I mean, we're talking, it was one of those posts that everybody's going back, blah, blah, blah. And somebody jumps in that I haven't seen on the forums in a very long time. He has an amazing company, amazing company. He's one of the biggest people that I would envy as far as companies. And he says what he says on there. It wasn't anything to anything. And people came in and there was five people that bashed. Me. Yeah, yeah, you, how do you know? You don't know. And he just left. Like people who don't <laughs> argue you are the ones like, oh, you will not know a person is rich because they tell you they're rich. You'll know it from other things. Somebody comes up to you and goes, yeah, I make a bunch of money. I'm pretty wealthy. They're not wealthy. Like people who have to tell you that they're amazing at business and people who, Hey, you know, this is what I did. They're not like that's that's just them trying to convince you and themselves that they're something. So yeah, that's, that's very thing. much that's very often true. Just like a bar fight, like you should be scared of the quiet ones, not the loud ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like that. So so tell me something. So you you moved. I, and I don't mean to get off of this, but I just want to uh, know too. So yeah. you were moved. You were Costa Rica and rainforest. How was that? Was that was that amazing? It was awesome. Yeah. So when we sold our company, we moved to Costa Rica for like a year and a half. We we're originally going to stay a lot longer. Because why not, it, right? It, I mean, let's just move to Costa Rica. That's a thing a lot of people We think. really felt like really compelled that we we're supposed to go to Costa Rica for some reason. And we're not like cool, interesting people that do crazy stuff. Like really, we're not. <laughs> like I had been to like Canada once before we did this, right? Yeah. But we prepared for it. You know, I studied Spanish for 18 months before we even went there. I did a wow. month trip down there and vetted it and like get, got the lay of the land. We met people. We connected with the church there. We tried to get like data mining on this Costa Rica thing. And then we went for it. We moved there and we had monkeys in my backyard every day when we woke up. Like it was crazy cool. 
but it was also hard because yeah. Costa Rica as a tourist is totally different than Costa Rica just on a Tuesday when you just live in Costa Rica. Oh, so yeah. you're not like in this little bubble of a um, like a all inclusive resort or something like we lived and we went shopped where all the everybody shopped and we it was the language barriers tough and stuff. Um, and we really missed our family. So we ended up moving back because we found this amazing house in Michigan that we loved. And so we ended up coming back. Uh, but when I look back, what it did for my kids, because like I had four kids there. My daughter was born in Costa Rica, so she's actually a citizen, has a passport. Um, mm-hmm. But what it did for them and what it did for me is it opened my eyes on how big the world is. Because Costa Rica is a tiny speck on the map. But when you're in, when you're there, it's gigantic and there's mountains and there's dangerous stuff and there's people. And it's like, it's just mind boggling how big the world is and how many people there are. And this is another business problem is that for me, when I started, maybe someone listening to this is I didn't understand how big the opportunity was. Like my original goal is to make $500 a week. And I was like, ah, I'm telling my wife we're in our trailer. I just left my pizza delivery job. I'm like, if I could just find a way to make $500 a week, we're going we're gonna to be rich. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I could just do be my own boss. And then, you know, later, <laughs> after lots of pain and suffering and, and years of growing the company, we do like $50,000 a week sometimes. I didn't get it. And I, I wasn't capable of getting it because if someone would have told me that the day one, I, I wouldn't have believed it in my heart. Yeah. Like it would have been, no, no, no. No, nope, because 500 a week is like hard. But I guess my encouragement is, is that the market's big, really, really big. Even when it feels small because your phone's not ringing, even when something horrible happens and you're discouraged, discouraged, like try to use logic when you look at the opportunity. You can have pretty much anything you want with a small service company if you get it to the right size. Uh, I was watching a Gary V. He said that the top 1% of people in America earn $400,000 a year. And I don't know where he got that stat, but everybody wants to be a millionaire and I want to make $10 million. It's like if you make $200,000 a year in personal income, that's a lot of money. The people in Costa Rica make $10,000 a year, family, household income. Like, and you can do that. Like lots of my friends do that with like a lawn thing or a window cleaning thing, right? I've done it. It, It's totally possible, but you got to believe first. And Mm -hmm. it's hard to believe when you hang out with the keyboard warriors that think small and don't know what's going on. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So real quick, your podcast, tell us the name, how to find it. Tell us sure. all the good information. Sure. You can search iTunes for quick talk podcast, two different words, or just or just search by my name, Josh Latimer, L-A-T-I-M-E-R. Or you can go to my website, which is quicktalkpodcast.com. And that's a great way to connect. Nice. I, I have to say, I dig your picture where you, 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 you have the... They're so serious. You look like you should have like a pipe and you should be talking about like... Yeah, uh, no one liked that picture. They're all like, what's wrong? Because I'm always a goofball and just like never dress up. And But then I did this like... My friend took those pictures when I was in Nashville. He's a photographer. I'm like, hey, take some cool pictures of me for my Facebook. And so we did it. And then I, I was like, well, this is a really nice picture. I put it on there like, that's not you. I'm like, <laughs> total fail. Well, that's the thing. Like everybody sees like that and then they watch this and they're like, this guy's wearing a ball cap? What is going on? Dude, How did they come day. in here with a briefcase? and Under Armour, everything, every day, keep it simple. I got to be me, right? Yeah. So it's not about the flash. It's just about achieving your own why, your own mountaintop. It's about my five kids, my wife. It's about adding value to the market. It's about building a business. It's fun. It changes so many people. You guys are all creating jobs. You're imp- impacting your community. You're creating wealth. Like it's insane what everybody's doing out there. And so keep going, guys. Yeah, awesome, man. Well, I totally appreciate it. I appreciate you uh, coming and spending some time. So, and if you are watching right now and you haven't checked out the podcast, do it. Subscribe, follow, all that fun cliche stuff. Like I said, it is amazing. He does one every day, which I could not do so i give you total total props for that but you interview some amazing people and uh, it's just awesome to kind of veg out so definitely check out the podcast and for you guys if you're still watching thanks for checking us out like i said hopefully uh the show doesn't suck too bad and you go ahead and watch the other episodes uh <laughs> either way we appreciate you being here and one last time i am a sales rep for window cleaning resource so my number once again 862-312-2026 and like Josh said, it's awesome just to hear that you've made a difference. So even if you just want to say, hey, I watch, what's up? Tell me where you're from. Shoot me a text is literally the best part of my week. 
uh, when you guys do that. So definitely do that. And thanks for checking us out. And until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>